Knock steady. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you. Alright, I'll swing good. Alright, fire away, guys. Joe, how would, how would you kind of size up how you guys were able to respond to their run and to not back up and even briefly take the lead? Yeah, I think, I think that's been really consistent with how this team has played all year long. Um, we, we've, uh, we've had some great runs. We've withstand withstood some great runs and um, so this was no different. This was no different. I think uh, the guy to my right had a lot to do with that. Uh, Knox was terrific in the cage uh, coming up with saves and, and then uh, just some timely scoring. You know, we had that great seven, seven goal push and, and then, then it just felt like we were responding to them and, and, then, and then Jake hits the big one uh, at the end to put us up and, and uh, you know, great win. 11 different goal scorers Real, real team victory. And, uh, we just couldn't be more proud and happy uh, for our guys and happy for uh, the Army Lacrosse family. For both Knox and Jacob, you guys have been part of some pretty good teams in the last few years. The NCAA tournament game is something that hasn't been done in a decade. How meaningful is it to you guys to be a part of this? Yeah, I think uh, right now there's just a tremendous belief in the room. Um, and when you pair that with an unrelenting uh, effort, Good things happen, so we're, we're really happy to be here, and uh, we're not done yet. Can you, can you walk us through that game-winning goal? What turned out to be the goal? Or the, I guess the going goal. Yeah, so I think they were they were subbing, um, and then I kind of got looked off by by one of their team mids, um, and I saw an opening and um, took the shot. So I'll give them the right shot. Coach, just um, you know, injuries and, and adversity, and mm -hmm. like you said, there were so many different goal scorers in this. Um, just the, the overall effort of guys who maybe people don't know as much about, you know, getting goals and maybe they play together. I mean, uh, we you know we played without a couple guys today and, and uh, a couple more guys. So we talked about some some guys earlier in the year, Paul Johnson, and, and then uh, in his uh, stead, uh, you know, Finn McCullough scores two goals, runs by two different guys to get goals. Um, Dawson Clark steps in, scores in uh, an extra man situation. Now, Gunner Fellows, you know, these are all freshmen making plays. Mike Tangredi scores his first goal of, uh, of his uh, of his season. So, you know, just different guys stepping up, and, and uh, you know, Paul uh, and Bailey O'Connor, um, who was running on the first line, uh, both are, are, are huge parts of our team. But when they went down, there wasn't any sense of panic from from anybody in the room. You know, there's just this, a great belief in the next guy, and it's kind of how we. How we've handled it, handled the season is, is uh, next man up, and, and uh, you saw that today. And, and I was really happy for Finn and, and Dawson to play as well as they did in Paul's uh, absence. Knox, Knox, you have made 16 saves. Is that a lot of pressure on your shoulders for the proper game? Mm -hmm. I mean, a little bit, but we've been in situations like this all year. Uh, mm -hmm. Our defense has stepped up big, and we had a lot of situations just like this. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of knew what we were getting ourselves into in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. just back and forth, and you know, making some saves down there and then getting the ball to go. It was, it was awesome because we knew we were confident in our offense and putting the ball in the back of that all day. So it was just awesome seeing that that come full, full circle. Knox, um, how do you how do you, think you ever respond from the one that you know, you, uh, you seem like you got better after that? Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think that was a first for me. Um, I mean, I, I was seeing it. I made a save and just a little bit of unlucky bounce going going in, and you know, 15, 16 goals get scored on, and you kind of got to rebound pretty quick. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was back and forth all day, just trying to make as many saves as I could. Defense put them in spots where I could. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just defensive work. How did you see that last possession unfold? Obviously, they got a few shots off of the play. I think it was Fournier who had the, yeah. the ground ball, basically. Yeah, that I mean, that, that was awesome, terrific play. Um, kind of planned out perfectly. But I mean, they were get some shots off quick, or guys were getting in their hands, getting some good lifts, and, and forced them to take some bad shots. So, um, at the end of the day, defense kind of bailed me out. They didn't want to get too many shots on that at the end, if even one. So. You know, just, just strong on their side of it, and then Ford coming up with a, a huge play with that ground ball and, and getting up on the other side and kind of getting the time to run out was huge. Uh, Jake, for you guys offensively in that half field, was it more of you guys just being able to get your hands free, or were you just putting shots on? It looked like, based on the way the game started, were you just guys just willing to put as many shots on cage? Yeah, I think uh, I think we were just trying to play with speed early. Um, we knew that if we could get the good spots, we were going to get good shots. Um, that was kind of the game plan, just you know, get good shots, uh, get good spots in the field.
uh, for the student athletes, there was a moment there with a few seconds left when I guess it hit you that you actually had won the game, which is what everybody plays for, this big night on national TV under the lights. Can you talk about the emotion when you finally figured out that this was over and you were going to win? I mean, it's good for both of us. It's very surreal. Um, still hasn't necessarily held away, but you know, it's just one of those wins where it just gives us another week together. Um, that was the, the mentality this whole week is we got extra time. Um, so we just gave it our all this week and we're going to do the same next week. And it's just awesome that we get another week together. And, you know, like Jake said, we're not done yet. Jake, um, I understand that you coined the like, keep the change phrase. Um, does it take new meaning now that you know, you're going to the SFA board? Um, I don't think so. I think it's, it's still the same. Um, it's still stems from that concept of just over delivering um, and kind of a, a term that, that Coach A uh, gave to us in the fall. Um, that's kind of where that model came from was a, was a play off of, off of over deliver. Um, and I think it's the same every game, um, no matter if it's the first game of the season or the you know, quarterfinal game, it's still the same. Coach, I know it was two completely different games, maybe, but how do you compare this one to a long time ago, as you're right. Um, you know, I think they were two-time defending national champs. Uh, there wasn't really much um, hope for that team. It was a 15 seed. Um, I felt like going into this one, we were, we were more evenly matched is, is, is how I felt. Uh, so it wasn't maybe quite as, as uh, that way, you know, in terms of big time upset. I mean, it was still a great feeling. Um, winning in Division One lacrosse is really, really hard to do. People like Maryland make it look easy. You know, they they just they've been so great for so long, uh, but it's really hard to do. And then when you when you put yourself into a uh, uh, an NCAA tournament uh, to get victories is is incredibly difficult. So just uh, uh, no words for the pride I have in, in this team and the resilience um, that they've shown throughout and the togetherness um, uh, that is a hallmark of uh, the Army Lacrosse family. So proud, so proud. Uh, Joe, what kind of role did did uh, Will have in this game for you? And I know he's from he's from Maryland, but a spot in Maryland, not in the you know. So so Will Coletti is one of the best faceoff guys in the country, and um, I think everybody recognized that last Friday night when he when he played against Mike Sisselberger, and uh, but he'd been doing it all season long for us. He had been a catalyst um, to our offense, and he, he was terrific. So there was a lot of build up to this one. Coming off of what he had done in the Patriot League tournament as the Patriot League MVP, and uh, you know he went against the best, and, and it was a stalemate. You know, and, and uh, we, we knew we needed to be in and around 50 percent, and uh, he was able to deliver for us. What a what a battle by both of them! I mean, 35 faceoffs, and it was it was not only it was it was a, an incredible thing to watch from the sidelines. I mean, you know, you were watching uh, two of the best go at it. And, Something that we've known for a while uh, up at West Point that, that Will was one of the best, and I think he established that uh, today. Where did you find him? Just I mean, he's from a spot in Maryland, not not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, there's some times in the locker room we we look at each other and we go, "Where did we find him?" You know, uh, uh, no, uh, Will had had a desire to serve, um, you know, so so uh, uh, there there was an, an interest on his part. We had had. Soft guy um, back in the mid 2014, 15, 16, in that era, and, and that kind of planted the seed for Will, you know. So uh, uh, that, that that's what he wanted to do. And Danny Ross was in between them, and uh, another Leonor guy, and, uh, and you know, Will wanted to follow in their footsteps, really looked up to him. So um, you know, we're happy, happy he's on our side.